In today's video, Emirates is coming to the rescue because another airline banned me and refused to check me in due to the fact that it didn't like what I said about them in my latest video and their attempt to censor me. So here I am making last minute changes and arrangements so I can catch a flight to Thailand's capital Bangkok on a very eventful day. Guys, beautiful good morning from Abu Dhabi. It's 4 a.m. and you'll be wondering, hey Josh, Emirates doesn't fly from Abu Dhabi. That's right, I was supposed to fly Qatar Airways to Bangkok today, but at the check-in counter I was told, Josh, due to a recent video, you're no longer allowed to fly Qatar Airways and you are banned. So I was looking at alternative flights and at 9.45, Emirates is flying to Bangkok from Abu Dhabi. So I'm gonna rent a car now and I'm gonna head to Dubai. Let's do this. So, all right, here we are. Got a car and we're gonna drive to Dubai now and gonna catch Emirates. Let's go. Crazy, no? You would think in all those years I've seen it all, but I have never been banned by an airline, not even close. So quite shocked to be honest. And it wasn't even a bad video. I literally just showcased how disappointing the service, the cleanness was for an airline that claims to be the best in the world. And as a result, they banned me. I was near the check-in counter just getting a coffee. And then uh, the supervisor from Akata Airways just walked past me and said, Oh, Josh, I love your videos. I'm a huge fan. Uh, are you flying with us today? I was like, I'm supposed to, but um, unfortunately, I'm banned. I was just told I can't longer travel with Qatar Airways. And I said, listen, it's not your fault. And he was very nice. Freedom of speech is not really a thing uh, in Qatar. That I can say. And it's quite of an extreme reaction. Instead of like, working it out and work on the shortcomings this is like no we don't like your opinion we ban you and we can't normalize this you know this is uh as a flight reviewer um and then in, in any profession you need some people to audit you need people to hold the airlines responsible for their promises and that's my sole mission and then to ban those people that's very close that's censorship you know that's censorship and that's dangerous you know and that can't become the norm so obviously you're gonna a proper video about that but now I um, I booked a flight with Emirates not banned with Emirates and I've said like not so flattering things about Emirates in the past especially with their business class I think we all agree that they have probably the best economy class in the world as I said many times in my previous videos but their business class is very outdated and very overrated but even when I did that video got a few million views nothing like they didn't ban me obviously they work and try to improve their product but anyways we're heading there now and uh, then we fly to Bangkok so instead of a Qatar Airways 737 MAX review and a 380 we will be flying the 777 of Emirates today so you can look forward to that one this Saturday, I'm going to share more details about the whole Qatar Airways story, including how they tried to bribe me to remove the video and what they did after I refused their offer. And also more interesting details from over 300 plus Qatar Airways employees who reached out to me after the last video was published, revealing shocking details. So hit that subscribe button right now to not miss out on Saturday's video. We made it. Welcome to Dubai International Terminal. Let's return the car and let's check in for the Emirates 777 experience. I then checked in and the last time I took a trip on Emirates Economy Class was early last year on the airline's flagship, the Airbus A380. I had a fantastic set of crew, great comfort and came to the conclusion that the airline features one of the best economy class cabins in the industry. However, the Boeing 777 is slightly different to the Super Jumbo, especially when it comes to the passenger comfort. So let's see how Emirates performs in 2023 and let's not try to get banned this time around. 
We then started boarding and I got a first glimpse of today's plane, the Boeing 777. With 133 planes in service, Emirates is the world's biggest operator of this type, slowly to be replaced starting from 2025 when the Boeing 777X finally gets Hi, delivered. Hey. But now, let's get on board. And here we are, welcome aboard the economy class cabin with 300 and plus seats in a 343 configuration. However, it narrows down towards the end of the cabin and that's where I secured myself a seat. Those twin seats are ideal if you happen to travel with your partner or a friend, or if you speculate for an empty seat next to you, which is most likely the case on most flights. So guys, here we are, welcome on board Emirates 777 in economy class. Flight isn't too busy, I was told, um, at the check-in desk. And from my research, uh, the seat next to me is not taken, so this is gonna enhance my travel experience uh, quite a lot for the next six hours cruciform, pretty friendly. And uh, yeah, if you aren't familiar, which I'm sure uh, you are, uh, let me give you a quick little seat tour here of the 777 in economy class. Each seat features a personal entertainment screen, a universal power outlet, as well as a USB slot. A pair of headphones and a blanket were already at my seat, and of course Emirates does feature the best entertainment system of all airlines, with thousands of movie options as well as live TV, something the airline has been known for for years. We then pushed back for an on-time departure, and now perhaps is a great time to follow me on my social media channels for daily updates. Now enjoy the views climbing out of Dubai International Airport. Today's flight path takes us over the Gulf, overflying the Indian Peninsula and then we head straight for Bangkok Suvarnabhumi Airport, arriving around 7pm. Once we reached cruising altitude, the crew got to work to serve today's lunch. Emirates' weakness was always the catering. It used to be bland and not very appealing, comparing to other major airlines. Hence, the airline started huge efforts to improve their catering and on this flight I was very happy to see a new different era of the airline's food options, apart from the hair being in my food, which was slightly annoying. And let me tell you, I finished it all even my greens. That definitely deserves a thumbs up. But let me show you something very interesting as well. So I know a lot of you tend to skip the Lou reviews, but don't do it because I have something very interesting to show um, here in the back of the 777. And uh, you know, most airlines, they have amenities. Um, it's nothing new, but here at Emirates, apparently, they get stolen quite often because Emirates has installed a little case there uh, to protect those amenities from being snitched. That's very interesting. But other than that, Lou is nice and clean. Uh, crew is also quite lovely. Food was delicious. And uh, overall, a very, very strong economy class product. And of course, Emirates offers internet connectivity on most of its flights, messaging packages starting at $2.99 up to $20 for the whole duration of the journey. I connected and the connection was stable and speed was great. The rest of the flight was rather uneventful and I occupied most of my time chatting away with my patrons on my WhatsApp group, which you can join as well by checking out the link in the description box below. There was an additional snack served before we started our descent into Bangkok and we then finally touched down in Thailand. I passed through Bangkok a few times on this trip and I'm happy to report that I didn't encounter any long lines or waiting times at immigration or to collect your luggage. So here we are, welcome to Thailand and that was supposed to be my flight, but Qatar no more. <laughs> So luckily the airport hotel is just a quick five minute walk and then I'll have a quick Zoom meeting and then I will sleep for like four hours 
and I'm off to Bhutan tomorrow, 6.30 a.m. in the morning. You know when you have like an eight hour layover where every minute counts, so you get, you maximize your sleep. You happen to get the hotel room at the very, very end of the wing. So here we are, welcome to the Novotel in Bangkok. Solid flight on Emirates and nothing like extraordinary. Uh, crew did what they were supposed to do. Food was very good in Emirates. That has improved because usually the food isn't that great on Emirates. And overall it was a really solid product and uh, yeah, uh, what a shame or what a what a way of Qatar Airways to handle with a review that uh, pointed out only their shortcomings. It wasn't even that I was making anything up or I was like revealing anything behind the scenes. And this is, this is how they deal with it. So now you probably know how they deal with a lot of other things. But there will be a dedicated video coming next week about the whole Qatar Airways incident because there's a lot a lot happening behind the scenes and it's important for the world to know that they can't get away with these kind of things you know um, that's how not that's not how you do it anyways guys um, check out my uh, uh, patreon page if you want to have extra perks access to extra perks such as early access to Qatar Airways video, which is coming um, next week, or access to my WhatsApp group, get a cool Cahill key ring, uh, have your name in the credits, so much. Just check it out. Uh, huge Patreon family already, or 400 members, and uh, yeah, uh, really cool community. Guys, this is it. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of today's uh, flight and Emirates and uh, I, uh, I'm gonna try and get a bit of sleep and then off I go to Bhutan tomorrow morning, an adventure I've been dying to do for the longest time.